So I'm going to talk about spiritual formation, romance, and dating. And if you actually want to hear a longer one, I did a, a series, um, it was probably about seven years ago with uh, the Tory uh, seminar that was on. And there I talked for about an hour with this. Um, you know, as I, as I thought about this, I thought you might wonder, you know, what does this old guy know about romance that's relevant to you? Um, you know, I, I've, that's a good question. I, I've been married now, my wife's here, Greta. We've been married 40 years. We, yeah, it's amazing, it's totally amazing. It's too much. We, we, we got married uh, when we were about six years old. And, uh, and we actually came to Biola together. It was a long time ago. Uh, that was probably about 39 years ago. I, we, we got married and then we almost started Biola the, the next years. And my, my family, we love romances. We don't like chick flicks, but we love romances. And uh, so I think of Pride and Prejudice. You know, we've read it, we've watched it, you know, and here's Darcy and Lizzie and Bingley and Jane. You know, they're, and, and you know what these romances are? We've watched many of them together. You know, in romances, you know, they keep missing one another. You know, they just, and, and when they almost come together and then they don't, you just kind of want to, you want to reach out and just, ah, come on, come together. And, and then finally at the end, they all come together and the movie's over. Wow, what a bummer. I mean, because now, well, what are you going to do? Have a, a movie on marriage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, or, or you have marital couples that they'll watch romances, you know, and they're, oh, they're so wonderful, and they're crying. And, and then when the movie's over, they turn the light, and they look at one another, and they go, huh. Uh, let's watch another romance. No. So I, I think of romance as, because Greta and I, we met in high school in like 1972 or three. And, uh, and I think during that time, romance is a period where God sprinkles a little, a little stardust over eyes. So they, they can't quite see everything going on. And, and they, they can't even see the other person totally. And that helps you marry. Just so you know that. That helps you marry. And, you know, God could have made it different. God could have made it so that you go through romance, marriage, and children when you're really wise. Like, he could have made it so that it, it, you have to live until you're 80 to get married. And you could have lived, you know, 100 to have children. Because at least then you'd kind of look back and go, I, I think I know what I'm doing now. It doesn't work that way, and this is really important to think about. God didn't do it that way. God made it so that dating, romance, and marriage, and having children, you know, they're really a little bit on the front end of things. They're early on. They come before you've learned everything about how to do it right. And I wanna say that because you're gonna have to hold that. You're gonna, you're gonna have to make decisions about all these things right in the middle. It's kind of like, you know, romance, marriage, dating, having children, it, it's kind of like fixing a car while it's moving. It, it's just kind of hard. And that's the way God made it. We don't have a lot of wisdom. I remember when I, you know, I think it was 18 or 19, that was when we were right to get married. And uh, I told my daughters, if they get married at 19, there'll be a homicide in La Mirada. <laughs> but, uh, so as I'm talking to Greta's dad at 18 or 19, I'm asking her, you know, can I marry your daughter? I, I'm sure he looked at me and thought, what is this idiot in front of me doing? <laughs> and so then he immediately went into this discussion of what he called the landmines of life. So he said, Johnny, let me tell you about the landmines of life you're going to encounter. And while he's I'm sure he said a lot of wisdom. All I could think during that discussion was, yeah, but dad, I love her. That's all I had in my mind. I'm sure that gave him no security. <laughs> so I, I wanna say before we get into some things, the key here is you're, you're on a growth. You're on a growth schedule here. You're going, you have a lot to learn. And you're going to learn of how to be a better chooser over all of this.
You're not going to have full wisdom, full clarity, fullness of God's will where God comes down and says, ah, that's the one, ah, not him. No, not him, ah, that's the one. Now's the time. It may not be that clear. What you're going to be learning in the spirit and opening to God is how to become a better chooser. God has much to teach us of how to make good choices. And so the key here is to grow. You know what also is confusing? This is just introductory comments, by the way. Uh, what's also confusing about this is that there is no command to marry or to date or to have romance. Like God doesn't say, thou shalt have romance, so romance her. Or, or thou shalt marry, so well, marry. You know, I did. I have always thought it would, it would, it would probably be easier at Biola if you just, if we had all the students just line up and number off, one, one, two, two, three, three. That would just, that would just get it going. Hey, we're all sinners anyways. You're gonna, so just give it a shot. Give it a shot. Yeah. So. So here the, the, the struggle is there's a lot of freedom here. Romance, marriage, dating, it, it's the gravy of life. You're not commanded to do any of these. And so there's a lot of freedom of choices. And so here's kind of the rub. You're free to date and romance. You're free to marry. But you're not free to unmarry. Except in certain circumstances. You know, what, what Jesus would say, you know, porneia, sexual unfaithfulness. Other than that, you're not free to unmarry. So, whoa. That's why we need wisdom in this. So, I want to just present two verses to, I want you to think about and a couple of principles. And here's the first verse. If you have the scriptures, you can turn with me. This is, or you can listen. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse three to seven. This is 1 Thessalonians four, three to seven. And it says this, for this is the will of God, your sanctification. See, this is something I know that is the will of God. I don't know if it's that you're gonna be romancing, I don't know if you're gonna be dating anyone here, I don't know if you're gonna marry, but I do know this, because the scriptures are clear about this one. It just says, this is the will of God, your holiness. And here's what he wants to talk about. That you abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor and not in lustful passion. And that no man transgress and defraud his fellow Christian in this matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of these things. This is rather serious. This I know to be the will of God, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that you learn how to possess this body, this vessel in holiness, and that you don't defraud somebody else in this process. You don't, the way Paul puts it in another place, you don't take advantage of somebody. So here's the first principle, or you know, I, I'm the director of the Institute for Spiritual Formation, so I'm always interested when I look at the scriptures of if I hear a principle, it really can become a practice. It becomes a spiritual discipline. So here's, here's the first practice. This is what the ancients would call the spiritual discipline of physical chastity. That's not very popular today. But the spiritual discipline of physical chastity would be just something like this. That you and I are called by God in the spirit, open to him, to abstain or constrain our, our normal sexual appetites until marriage. We have these normal sexual appetites, they're good. And yet Paul is saying, I want you to constrain this, I want you to restrain this until marriage because prior to marriage I want you to take that same energy and I want you to channel it relationally with me and others so, so that you can bring that power into marriage. I'm not gonna talk about this one. This would take us into issues of lust it would take us to issues of pornography. It would take us into issues of kind of casual sexuality. And I just want to say here, the bottom line is you and I are called not to defraud or use another person this way. And so I, I just want to say here 
that if, if you are struggling with this, if you are struggling with sexually acting out with other people, fondling private parts of others here, intercourse, oral sexuality, I, I just want to say, and I don't want to get into this more because that's for another time, that's something you want to deal with right away. And you don't want to deal with this by yourself because you're, you're really damaging somebody and you're damaging yourself. And, and this is a case where you need to talk to somebody and, and address this. So if that's going on in your life, then I want to encourage you, <laughs> talk to someone at the Biola Counseling Center. Talk to someone in spiritual direction, one of our spiritual directors. Talk to a faculty. Talk to a pastor. But that's not kind of my focus tonight. Here's more my focus. My focus is on the spiritual discipline of emotional chastity. It's a little different kind of concern. This is going to be the practice where you abstain. Now, I want to, we're going to have to be thinking about this. Where you're going to abstain from deep emotional intimacy with the opposite sex until you're ready for marriage. Because there is something about each of you that the core, the deep, the depths of you that was really only made for marital union. Or it's going to be made if you choose not to marry. It's, it's in the body of Christ and shared with Christ himself in union. Now, as I think of this emotional chastity, there is a part of you you're deep, that you're too restrained to share with. So that can come into this marriage if that's what you choose to do. And I do know the question that comes up is, who does this today? In fact, today we think that emotional intimacy is good. That it's good to go deeper with people of the opposite sex right now. It's, de it's good to, to plummet the depths of the other. Because only then you'll know if you can marry that person, if that's really the one you want. And I, I just want to say to us that um, emotional chastity is going to be a major player right now, especially for you, you at Biola, of how you can possess yourself in sanctification and honor and not defraud another. Because there is a part of that other person at the depths. Unless you marry, it's really not for you to sample. It's not for you to taste all of that stuff. And the ancients talked about this much. A second verse I want to bring up is, a, is, a, is it's in Proverbs 24, 27. And I want you to just hear this verse. It says this. Put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready and then after that build your house. I want you to hear that one again. This is a wisdom principle that young people were to know in the Old Testament. It says put your outdoor work in order. Get everything ready, all the materials. Get the fields ready and then after that build your house. The idea here was simply this that makes certain that you can plan as many things. You can be a wise planner, get everything together. You, you first gotta get all the field together, you gotta get the materials together, then you build your house. And the way this would apply to marriage is this, get everything ready, be a wise planner, get everything ready emotionally, financially, doing education, do the goals you want, do all the things that you want, get that done, then get married. I think today, and this was a struggle I had at 19, people want everything now. It, it is hard to postpone anything. It's hard to be wise. And let me just say, see the scriptures here want to say, you need to discover when you're ready to marry. And I'll tell you this, if you're in the depths of a relationship, if you're plummeting the depths and experiencing one another, emotionally and physically, it's gonna be very hard to discover, am I ready for marriage? Because you're, you're in it, and in it, it's just wonderful and lovely, and now it's gonna be hard to sort out, God, is this really the time? 
And so the principle here is the principle of wise waiting and planning. And I guess I might want to say this, just to get you to think. I don't think it's wise to what I would call seriously date. And and when I mean seriously date, I mean emotionally plunging into one another until you're somehow getting to that point where you're probably ready to get married. And the key word here is this seriously date. Because once you, you're really plunging in, something weird may happen. So practically, here are some situations that I, I'm kind of concerned about it. At Biola. This is the situation. Now, this goes back about, oh, maybe 12 years ago. I began to teach in my course. I, I don't teach undergrad anymore, but I used to teach one course undergrad in Upper Division Bible in spiritual formation. And at the end, we talk about dating. And this began a whole slew of circumstances that people would tell me would go on. Here's, here's what I heard went on, and maybe this still goes on at Biola. So here's the first situation. This is the problem of both a man and a woman who in my mind are moving too fast emotionally. And here's kind of what I saw happening. Or at least they'd come up and talk to me. Here's a young man and a woman, they're dating. They're, these aren't people who are just acting out sexually. That's a whole other problem. If, you're, if you hardly know the person and you're acting out sexually, that, that's a whole other set of issues that are going on psychologically and spiritually. But these are individuals who are becoming very intimate. They really like one another. It just it looks good, you know, they're dating, they're, they're spending a lot of free time together, they're reveling and getting to know one another. They're kind of gorging on one another, right? They're just, I have female, I tastes good, yeah, woo! So they're, they're, they're gorging, and, and maybe they begin to struggle physically. Let me just say, in, in these relationships, when you're gorging on one another emotionally, the physical just wants to catch up. The problem is not the physical. The problem is the emotional. The physical just says, ah, we're already in union, so let's do it. That's just what's happening. That's why the ancients talked about emotional chastity is what most good people need. Wild, crazy people need physical chastity. And so these people are developing a deep relationship. He wants to find her out. He wants to explore. She wants to be found out. She wants to be explored. This is getting deep. And then all of a sudden, the, the M word comes up. Someone drops the word marriage. Oop. Whoa. Now here's what I used to hear happen. And it's usually with the guy. There's a little freak out inside. Like initially it might be, hey, that's kind of exciting, right? I remember when, when Greta and I started talking, thinking about marriage, maybe at 17, you know, we were just little children who, that's what that was, well, yeah, marriage, isn't that good? Yeah, I get married, you get married, ah, I get married. <laughs> and uh, so, so it's cool, but then it could be he or she, but often it was he, he's back in his dorm room going, what the heck, marriage? Shoot, I just want to watch the football game. I had marriage. I... <laughs> and then a few weeks go by and he hasn't called. And then finally they get together and he says, you know, I've been praying about our relationship. <laughs> Whoa. Now here's the kicker. You know, God has really been speaking to me. <laughs> While he's saying that, the woman sees a neon sign over his head going, jerk, 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 jerk. You know, I think the Lord is just telling us we need to slow down. Or maybe stop, stop. Wow. He walks away from that conversation relieved. Whew. She walks away maybe devastated. It could be reversed. See, emotionally, they've already been gorging on one another. Emo I'll have to say this. Emotionally, they've already been fornicating. 
They've already been having emotional intercourse. They have penetrated and been penetrated by one another. He has tasted the depths of her soul. She has experienced being known and loved and it's incredible. And now one of them or both of them know parts of the other are over there. Parts of me are over there now. But now, you know, I, so I heard that. Whenever I would teach this, or I, I did a chapel, I don't know, 15 years ago like this. After that chapel, 15 years, I, I had this string of women coming up. <laughs> he did it to me. And then I saw a bunch of guys over there just guilty as all could be. <laughs> and then I did the Tory lecture about eight years ago. Saying, you know, but my daughter's here at Biola now. You know, they're both about 20s, and uh, so they're here. And so I'm hearing other things now. You know, life's changing here. Now I hear there's another problem going on. And this is maybe the problem of men not wanting to date at all. Now, I, I don't know if this is the case, but this is just, I, I, I've heard now some of, you know, the, we live right next to Biola. I live right next to Emerson Hall, right? And, and uh, so we have people over, and I hear women saying, you know, these guys are just weenies. They don't even want to date anymore. They don't do anything. And uh, the, the women say, you know, come on, guys. Come on, step up, right? And then here's what I hear the guys say. Wow, you know why I don't want to date? Because the, the women are too serious. Man, like women, chill out. Right? If I, if I, if I say, hey, you want to go to Common Grounds? She's thinking, is this the guy? <laughs> like, like, whoa, you know, I'm just going to Common Grounds. Like, Kah. whoa. Wow. So I... I'm trying to collect all this. You know, what's going on here? What, what, what's going on? Let, let me just say this. There's, you, you're all on a journey. You're all on a journey and you, you're not going to have crystal clarity wisdom. And, and so you're on a journey of growing. And also, I, there's a little bit of Peter Pan and Cinderella in everything going on too. You, you can't help it because you're young. The Cinderella is kind of this, it's, it's the individual that at, at the core of a woman is there's such a desire to be loved deeply and there's such a desire to be known deeply. There's such a desire, and when that goes on, it's so, it's so good. And, it, and perhaps you were loved by your parents but you weren't known in the deep by them. That, I, I would say that's very standard of my students that come to Talbot. They say I was very loved by my parents but I wasn't really known by them. It's one thing to be loved and known, woo. And so now this guy wants to know you and love you and mmm, that's going to feel good. Or maybe you weren't even loved by your parents, let alone known. And in any case, we were made. We were made to have this opposite gender relationality. And so it's, it's wonderful. And so I understand the woman, it, when this goes on, it feels good. Mmm. It's hard to say no to to be known and to be loved. And then for the guy, I think of us as a little bit like Peter Pan. You know, we're, we're a little bit on a journey to grow up. And we're trying to find out who we are. And you're coming to Biola and you're trying to, how, what are all the possibilities that I could do, that I can be? I'm away from my parents. What is life now? And for some guys, it's like, woo, opposite sex. Whoa, I want to know her. I want to experience her. This is good. This is better than mom. You know? Yeah, I want to I want to experience that. And then and so he just wants to dive right in. But there there are going to be other guys where it's now the opposite. There are other guys going to be saying, "Whoa, I'm not ready." I'm not ready, and you know something? I'm a little bit afraid of you because <laughs> she's too serious. Like, chill out. Wow. You know, when I see a wedding going on, it's beautiful. I see here wedding vows, and they're beautiful. But you know, now I've been around psychologists for 27 years here. And I'm a philosopher theologian. I, you know, they, they help me kind of look a little what's going on deeper. As I hear 
vows being read, if you could have an x-ray of their heart, you'd really hear something else. So I think of when Greta and I got married at 19, we were a little bit of a Cinderella and a Peter Pan getting married. In fact, if you see our picture when we were uh, married, oh my gosh, we look like Hansel and Gretel, like 10 years old. <laughs> and if you'd really see our vows, it would be something like this. <laughs> Johnny is really saying, uh, Mommy, uh, Grady, would you please love me and let me experience all of you and let me do my thing and let me go to 18 years of college to get a PhD and I hope this all goes well. That's really kind of what I was saying in the deep because all of that would come out in marriage. And Greta was really a little girl saying, Yanni, <laughs> uh, would you please fill me? Yanni, would you take away my hurt? Would you love me and know me perfectly? Because I want to be known and loved so much. You know, Greta tells me that after, the, after our, our wedding was over, the bells in the church went off, and she says, I immediately went, and she said, I think, John, you woke up <laughs> from romance. So what do we do here? Just, uh, again, I, I really do encourage you to go to the, the, the Tory message, because there I was able to talk about an hour. So we're just kind of touching around surfaces. But here's a principle. Here, here would be a kind of general principle. Um, you really need to think, <laughs> while you have your wits about you, you really need to think, are you ready to get married? And if you're not ready to marry, then I want to say this, then you're not ready to emotionally enter into the deep with the opposite sex. You're not really ready to enter into the core and, and, and gorge. That's for somebody else. That's for someone who will marry them. Don't you do that to someone. And don't even allow someone to do that to you because ultimately you're gonna want that for your partner so that you can really gorge together. But here's what you are ready. You're ready for a journey. And so the, first, the, the journey, you're ready for a journey to grow as a person. I just wanna say, if you're not ready to marry, then you are ready to grow as a person. You're ready to explore life, to use Biola and just explore friendships, explore the world, explore ministry, explore all your capacities, what's going on. And if you're not ready to marry, then you are ready to explore your soul. This is a time now to go to Biola Counseling Center or spiritual direction. This is a time to say, God, let's see what's really going on in my soul. Before I drag all of that into marriage, Let's go at it now. This is the time of life to explore what's your soul. This is also a, a journey to find God in your mess. This is a time, if you're not ready to marry, this is a time to learn how to pray from the heart. This is a time to learn how to, God, this is what's really in my heart. Let's go. Let's take this on. And then I want to end by this. This is also a journey with other genders. This playful gender interplay. It's not a time for, for pairing off emotionally and gorging, but you know what it is? It is a time to really be playful with the other gender. My wife was relating a story to me. This was a couple months ago. And she was reading about a woman who was in her 90s even some time ago. And she was saying that dating today versus uh, dating in the 1940s when she was dating, is so different. She said, today, dating is so serious. And she says, you know, before you're ready to marry, you need rather to learn to have fun with the opposite sex. And she said, this is what my mother told me in the 1940s. She was 16 years old and she wanted to date. And her mother said, no, well, here's what it is. Until you're ready to marry, you can date but you cannot go out on the same, you, can, you cannot go out on a date with the same person twice in a row. Think about that. You can date, but you can't go out on a date with the same person twice in a row. You know why? Because you're gonna be tempted to get too serious. This has become a main thing that I've seen at Biola, is two individuals, it, the, the pairing, you know, the pairing off's gonna happen but how to kind of make it 
again, I, I really, w it would be very interesting to see at Biola what it would be if there was kind of like a mutual agree agreement. Look, we're not right to marry, so let's enjoy one another. Let's go to common ground. Let's go on a date. Let's go out. Let's go do this. Let's go to a restaurant. It might be very different. I think it's, the, it's, it's when the pairing goes off, or what I would call deep pairing, where I want, I want this one, I want this one, and we're not really ready. Something's going to probably happen down the line that someone's going to get hurt and parts and pieces will get strewn around and a little lost. I, so I would, I'd be interested in knowing what this friendly, playful dating could look like at Biola, where we experience one another, but we experience many one another's, and we're not looking to get all our needs met by that other. It's not yet that time. But yet, we're kind of still looking, oh, is this, is this the person? But it's okay, I'm not, not worried about that too much, because I'm not ready. And then sometimes things just happen where it gets more serious, and you're in it, and you'll, you'll learn something. So I just want to end and say this. Don't defraud the other person physically. Don't use them. But now even more at Biola, since you're, you're good. Don't emotionally use somebody. Don't use them to meet all the deepest needs in your life because you know, that there's, there's a part of every one of you that's made for the depths of marriage. Or if you choose not to marry, then it's gonna be the depths of relationships here in Christ in the spirit. And this is a time to wisely wait and plan. God, am I ready for marriage? If I, and, and if I am, well then now, whew, let's go. If I'm not, well then let's, Let's experience the interplay of the friendliness and the play of gender relations. We hope you enjoyed this message. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Learn more at biola.edu.